Hi there and welcome to this creative workshop and in this workshop what we're going to be doing is looking at Blipper and um, Blipper is an augmented reality company that has come up with several solutions on how you can incorporate augmented reality quite simply into some of your own designs such as posters or products and it's been used for a variety of marketing campaigns from some very um, well-known brands. However what we're going to do is we're going to create an augmented reality poster with a piece of video that is really simple to get started with and will hopefully give you an insight into just how easy it is to create augmented reality. Now one of the things you're going to have to do first of all is sign up for Blipper. Um, I'll put the link below this video but you can just type in uh, blipper.com at the top and once it comes to sign up you'll just have to fill out this information here and sign up and authenticate your account and then you're ready to go. Now I already have an account and once you log in you're going to come to this dashboard here where you can look at the Web AR SDK, the Blip Build Web AR project and also the App AR. Now the App AR is actually what they've had for the longest and that basically uses your phone to um, augment some of the augmented reality uh, experiences that you're going to create into the real world and that's what we're going to have a look at today because in my opinion it's probably one of the easiest ways to get started in augmented reality. Now to start with what we're going to need to do is also download the Blip AR app on your either your iPhone or your Android device. So if you search for Blipper on one of the app stores or the iOS store and download the app then we're ready to go. So then you can start testing your products once we've made them. Now once you've got the app ready then we're ready to start making your product. So I'm going to go here and create an app project and I'm going to choose start from scratch. And the first thing it asks you to do is upload an image. Now this image could be something that you've made in Photoshop or as a PDF or something like that. It could be a poster. Anything that you've made is fine as long as it's between 300 and 800 pixels in width and height. So I'm going to choose an image that I've already got and I've chosen this Avengers poster here. Uh, if you haven't got an image, just go and download one off the internet for the moment and that will serve as uh, something that you can do straight away and incorporate into your design. And I'm just going to call this Avengers. This name doesn't really matter, it's just something that I can use as reference. And I'm going to click continue. And what that's done is it's imported the image into this Blipper app creation tool. So from here I get lots of different options. I'm only going to briefly just go through this because this is just about getting you into creating your first augmented reality experience rather than learning all the tools we can use with inside of this to create other experiences. But over here we have some 3D shapes which you can incorporate into this so when they're scanned these will show. Um, we have some miscellaneous of things like such as text, some empty sprites, cylinder maps and a sphere map which we can attach to this object as well. But perhaps when you get started, the most interesting ones are underneath this widget elements over on the left hand side. If I click on that, I have the option to input audio, calendars, um, the ability to call someone off your phone, emails, Facebook, galleries, Instagram, LinkedIn, uh, download a PDF, take a selfie on your phone, Pinterest. There's so much you can do here that's interactive straight away. And some of these work really well as call to action. So say if you make a marketing campaign and you want someone to link to your Facebook page, when they scan this poster, they'll be able to just click on whatever Facebook icon you've chosen down here at the bottom or wherever you put it on your poster, and it will take them directly to your Facebook page. And remember, although I'm going to show you how to do a video now, you always want with inside of marketing some sort of call to action so the user um, has an idea of what they should do next to interact with the brand. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to import a piece of video. So if you have a piece of video here that you've maybe downloaded or that you've got on your computer, we can use that. Um, or you can also use a URL from YouTube. So see down here on the left hand side, I've got video and YouTube. The advantage of uploading one of your own videos is that if you upload it, it can you can set it to automatically play. A YouTube video you have to click on to press play. So that's one of the sort of like advantages of having your own one. The disadvantage of uploading your own video is it takes up space on your actual Blipper account, whereas the YouTube one obviously is referencing a URL, so it won't take up space on your Blipper account. I'm going to go for a piece of video anyway, and I'm going to drag it onto here. 
and then over on the right hand side so this is sort of like the properties panel here I get the options here of what I want to do with it and how I want to rotate it and you can actually even use chroma key footage so say if I had a piece of green screened um, an animation or something so I wanted the background so it looked like it actually wasn't with inside a video I could even chroma key this so it looks like the character is actually animating outside of a video um, first of all what I'm going to do is add a video and I've already got some here. Here's some workmates, uh, one of the Marvel videos that I'm going to upload. If I, this, this actually should have been being uploaded twice, but if I go to add new and just browse to file, I'll upload it again. And I'm just uploading it now. Great. And so that's incorporated the video into here now. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to resize this. Now these handles here are um, handles for movement and, and resizing. If I go over to the right hand side here, I've got all these options here, and if I just click on this little um, diagonal arrow, if I just click on that now, it will allow me to resize it. And then I can click on the move tool and just move it into position to wherever I want. Now, as I said, sort of like if you bring up something that's not a YouTube video and it's actually one of your own videos that are uploaded, you also get the chance to autoplay. I quite like autoplay because I think sometimes having the least user interactions possible to get to the content is the best option. If they have to click on the video with their hand once it's uploaded, some people will do that, some people might not, and they might get confused by it. So I like to autoplay it. Um, and that's basically it. So what's going to happen now is I'm going to press preview up in the top right hand corner. And when I press preview, it's going to come up with um, some options on um, the numbers that I need to use, the codes. And here I've got add test code, and it's telling me that I need test code 2001443. Now, at this point, if you've got the depth, if you've got the Blipper app downloaded, what you're going to need to do is go into your Blipper app, and what I need to do is put the code in. You can see in the top left-hand corner here, I've already put an old code in for another test I did. I'm just going to use the settings icon, the cog wheel up in the top left-hand corner. I'm going to click on that, and where it says enter test code, I'm going to click on that. I'm going to remove this code and I'm going to insert a new code and that's going to be the one I had up here which was 2001443 for mine, yours will obviously be different and I confirm it. And then I just use the uh, close icon down the bottom and now I've got my test code ready to go. Now the test code, what that means is I'm not publishing um, my poster, my AR uh, poster that I'm making. But what I am doing is I'm allowing myself to test it on this app without anyone um, else being able to test it. And I'm going to press publish to test. And here we are, it's publishing test mode. And now if I tap to scan at the bottom, you'll see that it loads up. And there we go. And that's on my PC screen at the moment. So you could also print out this poster and the exact same thing will happen. Hey, Ms. Potts. If you find this recording, don't feel bad about this. Part of the journey is the end. And that's basically it. That's how easy and how quick you can create an augmented reality experience. Now, if you're happy with that, if you go back to your uh, project again, I can click back here and click edit. From here, what you could do is you could publish it. And if you click publish, um, you'll notice that you'll come to a screen, which will tell me whether I want it to be global or local just to a country. You might want local to a country if you're using different languages, for instance, or something like that. Um, and then you can press continue and then you can get it approved. If I go back to it, what I suggest you do now is Perhaps try just playing around with some of these widgets. For example, if I was to grab the Facebook uh, icon and bring it down here, I could resize this if I wanted to. Maybe that's a little bit too big. And drag it up. Oh, there we go. Just remember to use the arrow handles. And here, over on the right-hand side, I could choose to put a URL to the Facebook page or the page name. And then if someone taps that, it will take them to that. And I can open an external browser to do that as well. So there's lots of interesting elements that you can now have a play with as well. Um, one of the, perhaps one of the ones I think is really, really quite useful is the gallery. So you could have a product, say for instance, of something like maybe a shoe 
and you in the gallery if people scan the poster you can see different variations of that shoe and different sort of ideas um, and different designs for it you could do it for different cars um, calendars you could have dates for maybe if I had the calendar on here I could have the launch date um, put in here um, there's so many different options that you could do which would help provide user engagement and remember that is always what you're trying to do you're always trying to enhance user engagement with the brand and the amount of dwell time they have with the actual product and I hope you enjoyed this content and if you did remember to subscribe because I'm going to be doing some more augmented reality tutorials not just looking at Blipper but some other software like Spark AR and I'll see you in the future for some more augmented reality tutorials.